I greet every one of the praise of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In reverence to the word of the Lord, I would like to invite those who can to stand up. We're going to open the word of God in the book of Luke, Luke 22. Verse, Luke 22, verse 32. Luke 22, 32. And then we are going to read. We're going to read in John. Luke 22, 32. And then John. Chapter 21. 21 verse verse 7 John 21 verse 7 Luke first Luke 22 32 says the following here's the one that is being here on the projection 32 but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Now John 21. John 21, 7. John 21, 7. There are many more verses, but we're going to read just this other one. John 21, verse 7 says the following. Twenty-one seven. There it is. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. Lord God, we praise you. We're thankful for yet another moment in which we have a moment of fellowship for the condition that you give us once again this tonight to be presented before you through the precious blood of Jesus that gathers here in this place. We adore you and plead to you, Lord, that, that in your word we may continue blessing your people, your church. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Salvation, it is an act, but it is also a process. Jesus is, is the way, the truth, and the life. And that many on this path that are not guided by the Holy Spirit of God, they can go astray to the left or to the right or to the left. That's why the Lord Jesus himself says, you will hear a voice there behind you saying, this is the way. Don't go astray either to the right or to the left. In the Word of God tells us and speak to us regarding a disciple of the Lord called Simon, Simon Peter. And the Word says that Jesus was walking near the Sea of Galilee and there were two men that were inside of a boat. One was called Peter and the other was his brother Andrew. And when Jesus passed by those two men, he says, come and follow me. And then soon after, on the moment when Jesus called them to follow him, the word says that they registered that they left everything and followed Jesus. So it was showing that Peter, he one day made a decision. He was called by the Lord, and he accepted the call of the Lord for his life. Jesus called us to, serve, to follow him, and he left, and he had left everything to follow Jesus. And we can even think then, Peter is saved, right? The entire project of salvation for the love of Peter has 
being fulfilled at that exact moment. And the word says that Peter, one day, went to the temple, and Jesus was there present in the temple. And when the service was over, the people said goodbye to Jesus, but Peter did it in a different way. He called Jesus to go to his house. Believe in Jesus, you will be saved, you and your household. So it seems like everything was right, all right, right? But then in the house of Peter, he healed his mother-in-law. In a certain moment, Jesus asked, who everyone says that it is uh, the Son of Man? Some say it is a prophet. And Jesus also asked, how about you? What do you think? say that I am. And the Bible says that at that moment, Peter rose up and says, and said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. He was used by the spiritual gift. And Jesus himself said, you were blessed, Simon, because it was not the flesh or the blood, but was the Father that revealed that to you. God gave to Peter at that moment gift of knowledge, gift of revelation. So then he was a man was used by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus then says, upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will edify my church. So it was interesting that, that at that moment, Jesus was showing that the church, his church, was going to begin from Peter. And then we can even think, wow, Peter? He left everything and followed Jesus. Now he was being used by the Lord in the spiritual gifts. He has an amazing revelation regarding Jesus. It seems like everything is all right with him. Soon after, a few instants later, seconds later, it was that he had been used by the Lord so when Jesus began to speak about what was about to happen, that was going to happen to his own life, Peter was, once again, he opened up and his mouth and was used. But at that moment, he was not used by the Lord. And Jesus, at that moment, reproached him, go away from me. And even uses a name of the one who was using Peter at that moment. And if we look at it, the project of God is very similar. Peter here is related also to our lives, our actions, our attitudes. It speaks about a process of salvation in the life of man. Because man is not saved once and saved forever. It is not because I was used at a certain point with spiritual gifts because God has revealed to me something regarding His project and His plan that I am saved. The project of God is much more ample and more encompassing than that. And the Bible says that a certain moment Jesus gave a warning to Peter and it was that first verse that we read. The Lord was saying that the enemy, he had made a request. And the request that the enemy had made was to have a dance with Peter. Was to use Peter for evil. is to cause a, a harm to the life of Peter and consequently to the church because the acts of Peter would also reflect upon the church of Jesus since it would begin from, from, the, moment, from the moment God would use Peter with grace and might. And the Bible says that when the enemy made this request and we see the enemy has no power upon 
I'm one of God's chosen, a follower of Christ. He cannot go and have fun with a soul that belongs to God. He needed to ask for authorization. And when he asks for authorization, it means that he's the one he's making a request is superior to him. The Bible says, I pleaded for you. And the Bible says that there is only one mediator between God and man. Who's, it? Who's that person? Is Jesus Christ a man. So when the enemy wanted to take over the life of Peter, the Bible said that he deceded. He asked God for the life of that man. Remember, how many times the Lord has not done this for us? When the enemy is about to use our lives in a terrible way, to let, lead us astray from the project of God. So then God in eternity intercedes for me, for you, for each one of us, the Lord Jesus. I pleaded for you so that your faith may not uh, fail. So Peter had a little problem with his faith. You remember when he saw Jesus walking over the seas? He said, I want to do this. I want to also walk over the waters, but when he began to walk towards Jesus, the strong wind there, it deviated his attention. He stopped looking to Jesus and started looking to the problems, to the adversities, to the sea, to the wind, and then he began to sink. And Jesus said, man of little faith. And the great concern of God and Jesus with the church is about faith. Because faith does not belong to everyone. That's what the Bible says. It is also written the following. When the Son of Man comes, will he return? Will he find faith upon the face of the earth? And we know that faith is the basis, the foundation, the firm foundation of the things that cannot be seen, but of the things that we are waiting for. So then Peter had a, um, a little problem with faith. His faith was not in the measure that God had structured structured for his life. In the Bible, and Jesus speaks to Peter the following: When you and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. So Peter accepted the project of God on his life. He accepted the call. He was used in the spiritual gifts. He brought Jesus to his house. But Peter was still not a convert. He was not a convert. And the one who says this is Jesus. When Jesus, Jesus said, when you have returned to me, Peter was walking with Jesus for three years and still had not understood the project and the project of God for his own life. He had not given himself completely to the Lord. His faith was still small and fragile. How many times all of us also do not go through this process and others are going through this process of salvation? Yeah, people that convert immediately. Now you take Paul on the way to Damascus. The same day he converted, who is the Lord? I am the one who, who you persecute. And that was the moment of conversion of Paul. But with Peter was different. Peter was different, and Jesus had, he, Jesus was patient with with Peter. He allowed Peter, even though he was was not a convert, to walk beside him. Peter walked with a weapon. Peter had a weapon. He had a weapon. At that time, it was a sword. Today, it could have been an AR-15 or something like that. You know why? Because Peter still did not trust in the Lord. I, I, I know I'm not saying that there's any problem with having a weapon. I have no problem with this. The people of Israel always walked with, with weapons, but to defend. Also, David but also their trust laid was they were, did not lay in the weapons but in the Lord 
And the word says, my brethren, that at the day in which Jesus said that he still needed to return to him, Jesus proved uh, proved that Peter was still not a convert. He said to Peter, I'm ready. I'm going to die. And Peter said, I'm ready, Lord, to go with you to prison and to death. Who heard Peter saying that? would think, wow, Peter was an amazing man. Look, Peter has the courage to walk with Jesus to prison and to death. And Jesus said to Peter, you're going to deny me, Peter, three times. How many times a servant of God has not denied Jesus? In the same way, Peter denied him three times. I'm not going to number because it, with me, was more than 300 times. But it is the process of salvation. He needed to go through those things in order to become, to convert, in order for his faith to increase in his life, in order for the project of God to grow in him and his understanding also will grow. And the Bible says, my brethren, that Peter first in a moment of anger and, and wrath thinking that he could defend Jesus defending the work of the Lord. And many times we think that like men being men, we think that we are going to fight in defense of the gospel, in defense of the work of the Holy Spirit, in defense of God. Who, who am I? Who are you? Who are Peter to defend God? God is our refuge and, and fortress. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the one that gave orders to the wind and to the sea, and they obey him. Who am I to defend Jesus? to defend the whole work of the Holy Spirit or to defend God. And Peter wanted to be a defender of Christ at that moment. But he wanted to use it according to his own reason and to, according to his own understanding. When he takes out the sword, it was not to defend himself. It was not to protect himself. It was to attack, to wound and kill. The Bible says that Jesus, the one who had called him, he says, I came so that you can may have life because I'm way, the truth, and the life. And Peter still had an understanding of death. He understood that, oh, that man said something against Jesus. No, I'm going to take off his head. He want to imprison Jesus. So I'm going to exterminate him. So Peter was a man that at that moment was not understanding anything. Many times we are like this. We are walking with the Lord and still do not understand any project of God for our lives. And the word says, my brethren, that Jesus died and resurrected. Peter denied Jesus three times. I'm going to go over this very quickly. But Jesus said that Peter was going to return to him. And heaven may pass, earth may pass, but the words of God will nev shall not pass. And Jesus, he died. And Peter hid away. Jesus resurrected. And the women went there and uh, informed the disciples Jesus resurrected and Peter went to the tomb and when he entered it's funny that no one else entered into the tomb Jesus was no longer there they it was proclaimed by the angels they, the women told to the disciples but Peter was the only one who entered into the tomb when he entered into the tomb he sees a sheet folded on the corner he understood one thing I I will return. He died, 
but resurrected. I will go to the Father to provide a dwelling for you. I will return once again so that wherever you are might be, I will be with you as well. So when Peter saw that she had folded there, he understood that Jesus was going to return. He would return from the dead. And the Lord introduces himself to the group there, the disciples on the way to Emmaus and all those things. But there came a moment, and it is chapter 21 of John, where Peter was there with his, his brother and his disciples, and Jesus' disciples, and he said, let's go fishing. And the crowd went with Peter, and they climbed into the boat. And during the entire night, they were not able to catch anything because they were fishing during the night. Fishing outside of Revelation, outside the project of God. In other words, they went out to do fishing in the darkness without revelation, without the direction of the Lord, without an order from the Lord for His church. And many times we, we want to fish, right? I'm going to fish there. I'm going to pick up a resource, a resource for my own life. And sometimes we forget to wait for a sign from the Lord, a revelation from the Lord to show to us how we're going to be able to achieve that objective. We're going to reach that target. That's why we many times do the consultation of the Word of God. Why is that? Because an efficient direction regarding what we are willing to achieve, what we desire from the Lord. And Peter, at that moment, he made a decision. He, he thought, well, I'm going to fish. He didn't wait for a sign. He didn't wait for an order from the Lord. And they won't, did not catch any fish. And many times we are like this. We go out fishing and we do not catch anything. What we hoped we were not, we are not able to achieve. So then Jesus, he presents himself and asks, "Do you have something to eat?" He did, did not have anything to eat. And once the disciples of Jesus, they were with Jesus as well. There was a crowd of three thousand people, and Jesus asked, "Feed this crowd, feed these people." They also didn't have anything they continue to be in the same situation. But now Jesus died and resurrected and now he gave an order. Throw your net to the right side. The word says that Peter then, he said, Lord, we didn't catch anything, but because of a word, we're going to throw the net. And the net was thrown. But it, it is interesting that when Jesus was coming close, the disciple that Jesus loved was John. He realized that it was Jesus. They were on the shore. And Jesus told him, and they, Peter said, it's Jesus. The Bible says, when Simon Peter noticed that it was Jesus, he put on his garment. So in other words, Peter was naked, he was exposed, he was in the flesh, he was according to human reason, he was according to his own understanding until that moment. And because Peter was in, was in that situation, why is that? Because he had not converted yet. So Peter was exposed. Everybody saw the condition of Peter. But when he saw that it was Jesus, he looked to Jesus, but he also looked to himself. Look at my situation. I'm naked. I'm unrobed. I'm completely exposed. I'm on my flesh, on my own human reason, and my own understanding. In spite of the fact that I walked to Jesus and seen Jesus dying and resurrecting, Sometimes we are also in the same situation. 
walking according to our human reason, according to our understanding, according to what I think. And when he looked, he saw the situation in which he was. The word says, my brother, that at that moment, he put on tunic. He covered himself up. He put on his robes. So at that moment, it was a moment of conversion of Peter. You know why? Because he accepted salvation in Christ Jesus. He realized that he could no longer walk according to the way he was walking all the way to that moment. He realized that he needed to be covered by the precious blood of Jesus. He realized that salvation is not only an act, but also is it an act? It is an act and a process. Salvation is sanctification. Sanctify today because tomorrow we're going to do wonders in your midst. Be holy because I'm holy, thus says the Lord. And up to that moment, Peter was exposed. He was naked. He had no garments, and garment speaks about salvation. We sing a song here, what I once was, I no longer am. But I also am not all that should that I should be, but through the grace of the Lord, and I'm sure that I will be living with Christ in the, in the glory. So at the moment, Peter accepted a project. He covered himself. So now Peter is, has now converted. My brother and sister, you are naked on top of a boat. So then uh, there's a person that, are you naked? You, you see the kids play on, on top of, uh, on, a, on a lake. They jump in the water. They jump up on a boat and jump in the water. They're playing around. If you're naked, you if you're bathing, you jump up, being naked. But Peter made a different decision. He was naked. He put on his garment in order to jump in the water then. Look how interesting. Normally, would take out your garment in order to take a shower or take a bath. But Peter, he put on his garment before he jumped in the water. And the sea, sea is a type of the world. It represents the world. So when the church goes to the world, it needs to be warning, warned with the, wearing the sanctity of Christ. The church needs to present itself like it is, church by the Christ. And no stain. So Peter, at that moment, he understood the project of God for his life. So when he jumped on the sea, he jumped completely robed. We are in the world. We, we are in the world, but we don't belong to the world. Isn't it true? So he shows there that at that moment he converted. He understood the project of God. He understood his sanctification through Jesus. And that his acts, his it all would reflect on the church. So now he gave a testimony of a Christian, a servant of God. So then he goes and jumps into the sea, put on his garment, and then he jumped into the sea. When he comes to the shore, Jesus, he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? So now Peter, now he became a convert. And then he answered, Jesus, I love you. So now take care of my sheep. Then Peter, Jesus asked again, do you love me? And he said, I love you. And so then tend my sheep. And then the Lord asked third time, do you love me? And he was filled with sadness. And he, he answered to the Lord, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said, feed my sheep. So then the Lord, it is, the man is, man is only able to say three times that he loved the Lord when he understands the project of salvation, when he is robed with garments of salvation, when he comes to, 
to Jesus and say, says, I love you, Lord. I love you all the way to the moment I die. Jesus was a martyr. I want to follow you my life in order to earn heaven. So for the third time when he grows sad, and the Bible says that he was in tears, that was a moment in which Peter, was, his salvation was confirmed in his life. He repented from the acts he had practiced, the actions that he had practiced. He repented from having denied Jesus before the slaves, before the people. It was the moment of conversion of Peter. So that Simon was very sad because Jesus had asked him for the third time to ask him for the third time that if he loved him. And and he said, Lord, you know that I love you. So then Jesus said, Take out my sheep. And Jesus told him, When you were younger, you took care of yourself. In the process of salvation, when we we want to take care of ourselves. We want to walk according to our, our customs and traditions, according to our, our own understanding. And Peter was young. So Jesus said, when you are older, when you understand better, but when you are older, when you understand better the project of God for my life, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. So the servant of God needs to understand this. It's not him that gird himself. He's not the one who robe yourself. The garment is not the one that he produced. Remember Adam when he picked up uh, fig leaves and he thought that he had resolved his problem of covering his nakedness but the garment that served for Adam and to Peter and serves for me is one that is a garment that is provided by the Lord as garments of salvation through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ now that you understand you will be girded by another one by the Holy Spirit and it's the Holy Spirit that is going to guide your life it's not going to be you anymore that is going to guide your life is the Holy Spirit that is going to guide you. And many times you want to go to a place, uh, but but you're going to go to a place that God determined you to go because you're a son of God, because you are willing to obey the plan and the project of God for your life. And that's exactly what happened with Peter. So Jesus speaks with Peter. Peter becomes a convert, and he begin, begin to understand the plan and project of God. My, later on, my brother, we're going to see the transformation of Peter in the day of Pentecost. He opens up his mouth there. How many people converted on that day? 3,000 lives converted. And then once again, he opened up his mouth. And how many people converted? 5,000 people converted. Man that is a, con new, a convert girded by the Lord used by the Holy Spirit of God when he opens up his mouth to testify the plan, the project of God is fulfilled in the life of people Peter was that man that did not convert for, for about three years a little more than three years but once he converted, he was a blessing, an instrument of, of praise, of adoration, of glorification to the name of the Lord. And that's what the Lord is hoping for each one of us and of his church. That's what Jesus said. Do you love me, Peter? Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Take care of my sheep. Do you lo really love me? And he answered, Jesus, you know everything. You know that I love you. Amen. Let's hear a song.
to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing a woman, and this woman, the project of salvation in her life did not follow her growth. She has grown in other areas, but spiritually, she remains like when she received had an experience with the Lord originally. The project God has not her understanding of the project God has not been increased in a way that was causing her a little discomfort. The Lord was showing tonight that this woman, this servant, the Lord provided for her, like the text says in Peter, that another one would gird, gird at him. At this moment, the Lord Jesus is girding this woman, bringing us to understanding of the work of the Lord in his life and the project the Lord wants to do in her life. And this would bring to her joy also for her and for her family members. The Lord was also showing a woman that has lost the joy of salvation. Sometimes, you know what salvation is. It's, salvation is to feel great joy, but at a certain moment in our lives, we are not happy or we are not satisfied with the spiritual moment in which we are living. I think everyone has gone through this. I went through this many times. And she came here to the house of the Lord. And the Lord is blessing this sister especially, renewing her joy of salvation. And the angel would go to this woman, would place himself beside her, and would restore her fellowship with the Lord. Friend, only God can do this. The restoration of the body with the head who is Christ, only through the power of the Holy Spirit. And tonight the Lord is doing this in the life of the sister especially. And she would remember the day in which she accepted the Lord. And this would bring great joy to her life. Amen. Let's stand up at this moment. Let's pray. Bring the service to a close. Lord, we praise and we thank you to you because we are thankful for your salvation, for your project, Lord, has been able to reach us, for Holy Spirit has every day instructed us and taught us how to walk according to Him. We praise you, Lord, because at every moment uh, faith has been increased in our lives, in our hearts. Lord, we praise you and we are thankful for our salvation and the rescue because we have been called because we've been chosen to be your people and sheep of your pasture lord we want to thank you because you have had patience with patience with your people lord you have been every day you have guided us in a way that we came lord to participate in a plan and a project that will lead to eternity lord we thank you for this moment and please lord continue blessing your people your church Adding, Lord, every day faith into our hearts, the resources from your eternity upon our lives, so that we want once again we speak to you to pro proclaim your project in this place. Give us, Lord, a blessing, a peace, a night of peace in your presence. If, it, if there's anybody sick, heal anyone and deliver us from any infirmity. Lord, we we'll pray for us, our, our, your servant Patricia and Sister Jocelyne, whose may your hand be, be upon each one of them to pray, to act and manifest, Lord, your power, healing them and restoring completely their health. And the bread, remaining brother and sister who are sick, we ask that you may go with your providence and your mercy, Lord. Help also the orphans, the widows, the pregnants, and the poor, and the ones we need in your house. As for a blessing, you ask, pray for you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may be seated. Our service has come to its end. 
If you, my brother and sister, you desire prayer, a clarification regarding what was said tonight, the gifts, the word, remain where you are, raise your hand, we're going to give you the proper assistance. And reminding that tomorrow we're going to have in the morning at 10.30, we're going to have 10.30, right? 10.30. We're going to have Sunday school here in the temple. Once again, at 7.30, we're going to have yet another service of glorification in the name of the Lord. Tomorrow at 2 in the afternoon, 2 in the afternoon here, there is going to be a special transmission for the adolescents and for any other brother or sister who wants to participate straight from Brazil, from, from Brazil, yes, from Brazil through YouTube, amen? And to all the peace of the Lord.